Hello, Louis. Hey. Jay Ruiz, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, from all the way from the United States, and you're here in London for the first time. I am. Oh, amazing. How are you feeling? I love it. It's a, a different world out here, and I'm ready to come back. <laughs> <laughs> but is it your first time in Europe? It is my first time. I was actually born in Germany. Wow. I was really young. Yeah, I lived there for nine years. So, and then my, my father was in the military. So then we left from there, and I lived in the U.S. Right. Um, yeah. So I've been following uh, some of your stories as well. But uh, your story and uh, angels and uh, yeah, just stands out because three years ago something happened that totally marked your life, but in a positive way. It was a is it was an amazing turning point. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I was, um, real quick, I was, just, I was struggling in the church. I was actually, I'm a pastor's son, so I was that guy in the church that didn't know how to reach out because I was so scared and we didn't talk about this at church. So in a time of temptation, I decided to go to Pulse Nightclub. So, and we're 49 That's friends. Amazing. Right, Where's Orlando, that? Florida. Mm -hmm. We're 49 friends were taken. And uh, the gay community lost a lot. I mean, it was a very tragic worldwide event. Mm -hmm. Wow! And you got—I imagine you got tremendous amount of support from, uh, from well, just the gay community in general, and also churches yeah, around you because yes. you were reconnected with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what, what happened after that? Like, uh, how how did you? Because you're a Christian, you're you're yes. you're filled with the Holy Spirit. How did that come about for you? Because you were not walking. Uh, necessarily as a faithful Christian at the time. Yeah. How did it happen? Yeah, so one thing, um, through the persecution, I found relationship instead of religion and legalism. I think I was living my life for a long time trying to check the box, trying to be this Christian right. in front of people, but mm. inside my heart it was so dirty and I was just so rebellious and I had lust issues, I had pornography, masturbate, you name it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to now have relationship, but that didn't happen until I found out that I was HIV positive where I was just like, whoa, you know. Um, first I survived this Pulse nightclub event and then now months later I find out that I'm HIV positive. So I, all that was just something that kind of like uh, connected me and made me just be like, wow, I, I, need, I need this Jesus and I don't need religion. Mm -hmm. Right, it must have been so hard um, for you to sort of like go through that change. Yeah. And, and how did you balance that with the support that you were getting from the, gay, uh, the worldwide gay community? How, how was the reaction? Yeah, so I didn't expect it at all, but through that, there was so much persecution when I decided to come out with my story. Oh. When I decided to share everyone that this is the man that I'm following with now, is mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the only man that I wanted in my life that wouldn't cheat on me, that wouldn't sleep with my best friend, this man Jesus that I'm now deeply in love with, um, they didn't accept that. Mm -hmm. and because they and said, you chose not to compromise, you just right, stuck right. to the Word of God. And yes, yes, I yeah. found, I found um, scriptures that led me to know that the life I was living was not the life that God wanted and intended for me. Right. So I right. started understanding my identity in Jesus and who He created me to be. Right. So, and, and that's when I started pulling away from that ideology. Mm -hmm. And it's been a journey, you mm -hmm. know, we're not perfect, no one's perfect, but now there's a journey of just following Christ throughout of that life. Yeah, and there must have been many others who took example from your life. Yeah. Can you tell us maybe one or two stories? That yeah, sure. Um, so I decided to share my story for the first time because I was so involved in trying to make everyone happy. You know, my LGBT friends, the church, I was just trying to make everyone happy. And in that, while I was taking a shower one day, um, I cried out to God and I was just like, you said you would use me. You said that I had purpose in a ministry like we all do sometimes. We're like, <laughs> yeah. God. Um, and I felt the Holy Spirit just whisper in my ear and say, you haven't forgave the shooter yet. Wow. So I was carrying this unbrokenness and I was so worried about ministry that I had so much inside that I needed to fix first. Sure. Sure. Um, so I wrote this post on Facebook and I said I forgive the shooter. And I just went ahead and told my whole story, my testimony. And Fierce. through yeah, and through that is where um, a lot of my LGBT friends turned their backs on me. Uh -huh. A lot of people turned their backs. Some mm -hmm. people even in the church because they thought it was dangerous to share a story like that. Wow. And when that happened, um, it's like I felt like the Lord was like, now it's your turn to choose a side. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And when I was able to choose Jesus, now I became fearless. Now all of a sudden this, I was able to speak the gospel with no compromise and I didn't have to worry about, oh, is he okay? Is she okay? Now I'm able to just speak Jesus the way that it's written in the word. Mm -hmm. You use the word fearless and your yeah. ministry actually goes by the name Fearless Identity. Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit more about how uh, this move has been developing and how God has brought you, former homosexuals, together yeah. to um, have a positive influence over uh, the world around us. So it's so amazing. Angel Cologne and I are the CEOs of Fearless Identity. Ah, yeah. So what we do, because we both come out of uh, the church, we go into churches now and we build teams where people that come um, that are from the LGBT and decide to go to church, now they have a place to journey. Now they have a place to ask those questions that the church is scared to talk about. Then what we do as well is we train the pastors, we train the leaders, the worship leaders, everyone, the body of Christ in the church, how to deal with if a transgender walks into the church. Mm -hmm. If someone that's a gay and married and has a kid, what do we do, you right. know? So are they established uh, teams in these churches? So yeah, we go... Are they, are they like permanent teams or... Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. that's what we so do. They don't, don't just go maybe once a month or once a year, they just... Yeah. Dedicated teams within the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Where they can just get resources and find out what it means to journey with same sex attractions and how to walk out of that yeah. and get biblical clarity in a yeah. sexually confused wow. world. And you're not only having an impact in the churches, but you're also going out in the streets. And that's what I like about yeah. what the, the work that you are all doing. Yeah. Uh, what is it looking like in the streets when you meet? You know, the, yeah. the American people in general, what are they thinking like? Yeah. And, well, and you, you're, uh, you're doing the Freedom March in various states in the, in the U.S. Yep. Yeah, tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so I'm also co-founder of the Freedom Marches, and I love how we're now stepping out of the churches. Mm -hmm. You know, we're stepping out of the four walls, mm -hmm. and we're preaching the gospel out. So what we do is we get together, and um, 12 people that have come out of the lifestyle will stand up and share our stories. Right. It's also done by worship teams and then we have churches all around come together with their resources, come together as the body of Christ should. And now we have people just getting plugged into the churches that are, are surrounding in that state. Um, and we march around the downtown area one time and just proclaiming freedom, singing songs, letting people know that there is freedom through Christ Jesus. And that even though the world says you were born this way, John chapter 3, 3 says that I must be born again. So now people are being changed and they're seeing that, wow, I know society and culture is preaching something, but these are people that are testifying, saying that you can be changed, that you can come out of this yeah. through Christ Jesus. And now what? There's a community. And for a long time, me, that I grew up in the church, I was so alone. I thought I was the only one going through this, mm -hmm. but not no more. Now there's an army rising up and we're coming together. Yeah, yeah. And now it's a worldwide movement. We're in London, you know what I mean? <laughs> Who knows where we're gonna be tomorrow? Yeah. So there's revival. I believe yeah. that God is sweeping the world right now. And I just, I love it. So it's a huge Beautiful. movement. Beautiful, just talking to you, I can feel the authenticity and passion that you carry uh, together with your partner in, um, in Ministry Angel. So yeah, tell us a bit more maybe about some upcoming projects. What's yeah. in the pipeline, guys? Yeah, so, um, what we're doing is the hubs where we're traveling around leading like little bases at churches but our one of our goals is also that uh, Angel Cologne is developing a worship band so he's hoping to near few uh, in the near future make an album and and as well as we're building a school a fearless identity training camp where people can come pastors, leaders from all, instead of us like going everywhere, they can now come in right. internationally all around and kind of get um, that training uh, in courses and how to deal with this kind of issue. Hey, the school's talking about it. Hollywood is talking about it. Everyone is talking about it. So why isn't the church talking about it? Right. So Fearless Identity is, Freedom March is, Change Movement is. So now we're just like going, go, even Voices of the Silence yes. internationally. So yeah. I just, I love what we're doing. So hopefully in this school, we can all come together and just, you know, um, and train the church, train the body of Christ. And if LGBT wanted to come in and find out about this, it's open to them too. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. So what do you think it's going to look like in about two years time? What do you see happening in two years time oh. in the US and in the world? How is your work going to change yeah. and the work of organizations such as yeah. Voices of the Science, how is it going to bring change? 
I feel like no longer is it gonna be a position, but an influence. Mm -hmm. You know, Walmart influences the whole world. I feel that fearless identity in about two years is going to influence the whole world. With, and not just, I don't even speak about fearless identity, all these ministries that we're connecting to, we're becoming one. Right. And that's what, and we're just getting that ready for that trumpet sound. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. But I, I love it. I just keep doing what we're doing. So in about two years, I just see it just exploding like it yeah. already is. And more than anything, seeing people come out of the LGBT lifestyle and not just making it a gay to straight thing, yeah. but to making it a loss to save thing. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. That's so exciting. I really look forward uh, to what's ahead. And I'm so glad that this is bringing unity in the church. Yeah. And, and yeah. It, it's also elevating the church to a, a place of just greater and higher authority in the world. Amen. And it's such a privilege to be instrument. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, we're going to be having a concert tonight as well in yeah. London. Give me a chance. And we're going to have a great time. Thank you for coming. And, Thank you. Uh, We'll continue in prayer for you guys. Yes. We're excited. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you.